The Air Force Eastern Test Range launch site is Cape Kennedy Air Force Station, Florida. In a 20-year span, beginning with the bumper rocket launched July 24, 1950, there have been nearly 1,800 major launches from the Cape. In September 1968, preparations had been completed to launch Delta 59, a workhorse rocket with an unequaled string of successes. This Delta was one of the first utilizing a long tank Thor booster. Three strap-on solid propellant engines nearly double the liftoff thrust of the main liquid propellant engine. The smaller Delta second stage takes over after first stage burnout and a solid propellant third stage is relied upon to accelerate the attached payload into a preliminary elliptical orbit with an apogee of more than 22,000 miles above the Earth. At that point, an apogee motor built into the spacecraft is ignited to circularize the orbit at a speed which precisely matches the rotation of the Earth. This was to be the first of the Intelsat-3 series of communication satellites, part of a network designed to provide improved communications to all populated areas of the world. The spacecraft was to be launched for ComSat, the Communications Satellite Corporation. One important element of any launch vehicle fired from the Cape cannot be seen by the ground observer. Hidden inside, it is known as the destruct package. This is a safety device seldom used, but designed to destroy the vehicle if it should go out of control and thus become a threat to lives and property. Responsibility for the command destruct decision is assigned to the range safety officer in the range control center miles from the launch site. Information comes to him from a number of sources. A direct verbal report comes from an officer manning this sky screen. He gauges the rocket flight in relationship to two wires parallel in depth so the eye, in effect, sees the rocket climbing the wire. Pictorial information is provided, too. Camera vans relay closed-circuit television pictures of the flight to the control room console, as well as pad safety and command control. Nine tracking radars were used to support this Delta launch test. Located as far away as Antigua, others were sighted at Grand Turk and Grand Bahama Island the balance on the Florida mainland. Signals sent out and returned are translated to give instantaneous information about the position, velocity, and acceleration of the rocket. The radar inputs are received by the CDC 3600 computer, which converts the electronic signals to visual displays at the range safety console. These displays show the real-time position of the rocket as well as the predicted impact point if the engines were stopped. Sensors in the rocket often transmit the first clues that all is not well. Telemetry receivers pick up this information and send it to the range control center. If a malfunction is detected, the arm switch is activated, which stops propellant flow and arms the destruct package. If the safety officer decides to destroy the rocket, the destruct switch is also thrown. The electronic arm and destruct commands are sent directly to the erratic vehicle through special transmitting antennas mounted on the command destruct building. Similar facilities at downrange tracking sites are controlled by the range safety officer at the Cape. This is range test number 7970, covering the launch of Delta 59 carrying Intelsat 3A with the aid of conversations recorded and film exposed at the time, we recreate the events of September 18, 1968. Eastern Daylight Time is 18.08. T minus one minute and counting. Roger, I understand. Green, you have a final clearance to launch at this time. Roger. Thank you much. Senior R, sir, will you enable EGAS, please? EGAS enable one half hour local disable. Roger, understand. Command carrier covers coming up. Switch covers coming up. This is the RSO for a final communications check. Parish 3? Parish 3. Parish 7? Parish 7. 
Parish 91. 91. Wire? Wire. Radar? Radar. TM? TM. TV? TV. Roger, reading all stations loud and clear. Coming up on T minus 30 seconds and counting on my mark. Mark, T minus 30 seconds and counting. for a terminal count. Left of normal moving downrange at this time, uh, beacon track. Roger, I got an alternate IP to the left and a radar tends to be coming down. Roger, radar, I understand it's coming down. TM confirms left. Roger, TM. IP is left of nominal, about 10 seconds slow at this time, moving downrange. Alternate IP confirms to the left and radar still coming down. Roger, radar. TV is still erratic. Roger, TV. TM's in noise. Carrier's on three. Explosion on TV. Roger, sending arm. Uh, Sending distract. Okay, you get it. Roger, bring up one high power, please. Yeah, taking, one high power. Taking distract away, sending distract again. Let's back it up with system five. Carry your own. Okay, one's off. Roger, sending distract again. Lapse time, less than two minutes. Roger, team, uh, what do you have? An expensive Roger, loss, team, yes. Wire, uh, what do you see? But a cost which can be more easily met than one involving human lives and other exposed properties. If they've taken time to stop and think about what could happen, the citizens of nearby communities, as well as distant cities, would be thankful for these strict protective procedures. Looking to a future when missile test malfunctions will become even less frequent, the Air Force Eastern Test Range is committed to provide continued evaluation of vehicle performance on every Cape Kennedy launch, with brain safety serving always as an effective shield against potential disaster.